I'm Aaron Fawn, and I'm on a trip for life. This was a fool beyond measure. Elegant truths of exquisite interrelationships of the awesome machinery of nature. I believe our future depends powerfully on how well we understand this cosmos, in which we float like a boat of dust in the morning sky. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm in Italy, Texas, a small town with a big vision for the future. Here in Italy is located the Monolithic Dome Institute, a place where, over the last couple of decades, a small group of dedicated people have been working to develop a new structure to carry us forth into a better future. What they've come up with is a remarkable type of building called the Monolithic Dome that is not only easy to erect, but also is very energy efficient and has a remarkable amount of disaster resistance to boot. In addition to that, with the proper maintenance, it should last for thousands of years. I think that these properties are unique for any modern building technique and deserve greater interest from the public. So let's learn more about this building and how it works from David South, the founder and CEO of the Monolithic Dome. Well, it's infinitely stronger. It'll handle a direct hit with a Force 5 tornado. Uh, it's fire safe, because it won't burn. Uh, an earthquake means absolutely nothing to it, because it's all one piece. And it uses way less materials to construct. And probably the most important, it is many times more energy efficient. Typically, it will use between one-fourth and one-third as much energy to heat and cool. The conventional way of building domes is extremely labor-intensive. You pile up a pile of dirt, pour concrete over it, or you do very expensive forms. A monolithic dome, we inflate a form, inflate a balloon, if you will, and spray it with the materials, spray it with the concrete, tie the rebar. It's just many times faster. Well, it was a speech by Buckminster Fuller, the father of the geodesics. Uh, he was claiming that domes would do so many things better than conventional buildings. And I believed him, but I just found a little better way of building the dome. I started the monolithic domes about 35 years ago. I'd been working and playing with the geodesics for another 15 years before that. They're much faster to construct. In the monolithic dome, we can build it in virtually any weather, because the first thing you do is inflate the air form, and then all the work takes place inside. So you're out of the weather and you put the urethane in place, tie the rebar, put the concrete, all incrementally. The very first thing is the air form, which is the protection. The reality is, is we aren't square ourselves. We have most of our furniture isn't square. It's a matter of arrangement. Now a kitchen, I can put a kitchen against that round wall. The only part that's hard for me is the countertop. But it's always very easy to run a couple of perpendicular walls and put your stove and fridge and, and stuff on it. It's very elementary. It is not a problem. Well, here in Texas, it's got to be an awful big house that takes more than the smallest air conditioning furnace. Now, if you live up north, I like to see you put hot water heat in the floor. It's very efficient. The, I built one in Idaho that the cost for the water heat only for the entire year was under 100 bucks. Monolithic domes are very efficient at holding a temperature. Lots of thermal mass and good insulation do a lot even if the area is often open to the outside air. For instance, the enormous production facility they have at the Institute is heated by the lighting alone through the winter. That sort of efficiency is outstanding for a facility of this size, even if they are in Texas. The domes are airtight. There's nothing as can airtight as a monolithic dome. But it's very simple. You simply put in 
an energy recovery ventilator. And now we got the freshest building on the planet. Because what we're seeing is conventional buildings that leak, used to leak a huge amount of air. We closed that up, so now the CO2 levels are going up. We're getting bad air in the house. And unless you put an ERV in it to change that air out, you can spec bad air in most houses. Uh, we put the ERVs in, and then we get the clean air inside. Well, I built a home for a lady up in Buffalo, Missouri. And she said the next year that she looked out across the field and saw a tornado coming. Said it was tearing up the, the wheat in the field, came into the yard, tore up all the trees, went up over her house, went on up out the yard, on up over the hill and into town, killed 13 people in town. She said the most interesting thing to her was that she could stand there and watch it, fascinated by it, and not have any fear. And I find that the people that have had experiences like that with the tornadoes, they don't have the fear. In fact, an excellent demonstration of the durability of monolithic domes occurred near Italy, in the neighboring town of Avalon, just before I arrived there. A small tornado struck at the local school, hitting both the monolithic gymnasium and its neighbor, a more conventional gym building. The monolithic dome survived with just one acrylic brick damaged, but the tornado ripped open the roof of the steel gym and the resulting flooding destroyed the wooden floors. Quite a difference, eh? Actually, the town uses the dome as a tornado shelter, and I'd say their confidence is well placed. The cabin is something we've developed in the last few years, and what it is, it's a monolithic dome that you can pick up with a crane and set on a truck. The floor, walls, and all, it just picks up as one finished piece. Kind of looks like an Airstream trailer, but it doesn't have wheels. And they're very, very heavy. You set it down and that's where it's gonna stay, wind or whatever. They, uh, a nice unit that's for two people will weigh 25, 28,000 pounds. We figure about 4,000. And then you also know that we teach this technology. We have people come here, we've had over 3,000 people come here, go through classes, learn how to build, and 450 have gone ahead and built one or more domes. Some make it a business, some build one and say, well, I don't want to work that hard, but we get it. it. It's happening. And that's the only way it's going to happen, is by having more and more people involved. It's an air form that we inflate that stays on the outside of the dome as its primary resistance of sunshine and rain. As that gets older, we have to worry about rejuvenating it. And we can rejuvenate it by spraying it with some coating, paint if you will. We have many of those. We have some silicones that I really like that go on. We also can do things like cover the outside of it with more concrete to make it absolutely fire safe from forest fires. We can also do uh, ceramic tile on the outside, kind of like you see in some of the old pictures coming out of uh, the Middle East. And the ceramic tile is a gorgeous surface. Uh, we have a metal cladding. It's kind of a metal shingle, if you will, that we can put on the dome. And then some people just really want privacy and all, and we just build the dome and cover it up with 20 foot of dirt. And we build a number of homes underground. Well, for most of the time, I've been building super insulated domes. In the last few years, I've been working on a dome that's not so well insulated that I can build in the third world for low-cost housing. And that's where this basalt came into being because concrete needs to be a certain amount of thickness to protect rebar from rusting. And this is made from lava rock. 
and I don't have to protect it from rusting. So I can thin up the concrete on the building. And as I thin up the concrete on the building, I cut the cost. I think David is being far too modest here. So let me explain why this new dome technology is so cool. What you're looking at now is a long coil of basalt rebar, a reusable airform, and a pump to inflate the airform. This sort of monolithic dome uses the airform as a mold, onto which a layer of concrete is applied, even by hand. Then the dome is wrapped in rebar and coated again. The airform is then deflated and reused. This tiny package, barely six feet wide if you put the airform and the pump inside the ring, could build several basic huts. Imagine if you sent a bunch of these, along with compact implements for a group laboratory and kitchen, you could deliver a village in a shipping container to any disaster site or war-torn area in the world, and have new, permanent, weatherproof, and durable structures working within days. Living in one of these would be infinitely better than a tent, and would also be better than the huts and shanties many call home in the global south. It's terrific, and I felt privileged to be present to see the first shipment of the new domes, ready to go out the door. I got invented and patented a door. I wanted something that I could build an airplane here that was tornado proof. And no, no airplane hangar doors will stand a tornado except this one. What it does is it looks like you've actually just cut a piece out of the dome and then it rotates within the dome, but it's made out of the concrete and steel and you just rotate it on the inside surface of the dome. I suspect it's what you're born with, what the Lord gives you. You just, I'm stuck. I'm stuck trying to make this a better world, and my contribution are the domes. We've now built in 52 countries, 49 states, and I'd like to double the countries and get that last state. So that covers what a monolithic dome is, how it's made, and the many benefits of the construction technique. Join me next time when we will explore some of the many uses of monolithic domes, the other projects that the Institute is involved in, and how you can learn to build a monolithic dome for your home or business yourself on The Trip for Life. The sky calls to us. If we do not destroy ourselves, we will one day venture to the stars.